Hey, what's up, man? What's up, LRB Jungle? Welcome to my daughter. Welcome to the LRB War Star interview, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. Shit, yeah. man. I mean, you saying I'm high all the time, man. So, you know, I had to miss show up. Yeah. I, I comment down to the definitely an intercession. Yeah, man. man. I appreciate you coming from Boston just to hop and speak for yourself. I appreciate yeah, you coming yeah, from, yeah, from the city and everything outside, like outside, outside. You already know we're outside in this shit, man. And you can feel free to you curse war, so you can do whatever you want to do. This is, you know, I'm going to do anything I'm going to do. Yeah, me and. Yeah. 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 So you can feel free to say the thing you want to say, man. But welcome to the interview, man. How you been? Uh, I've been good, though, man. Yeah. Cool, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really vibes. So can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Man, uh, for those who don't know, right, who is L.I.B. Jungle? Uh, all these jungles are uh, artists, um, Liberian artists out of Mass, yeah. Massachusetts. You know, I mean, we do a little bit of everything, a little bit of rap, dipping in the Afro beat. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just trying to just branch our wings out a little bit. Yeah. Man, uh, what's what's the temperature like? What, what's the weather? What's, what, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the shit like in, in Mass? Because people from Mass always try to say that. Philly and Mass got the same weather, but I don't feel like that shit is real like that, man. Nah, it's the same weather, man. <laughs> I think that shit colder than Philly, man. Nah, that, nah, I mean, it gets like that, man, but yeah. shit, man, know what I mean? That's mm. the shit that make you tough, my man. Know what I mean? <laughs> you ain't trying to be no yeah. bitch out here, no, man, that's cold. Yeah. I mean, but, I mean, Mass, I mean, I mean, for niggas, for people who don't know, though, I mean, I mean, I was born and raised in Mass. I mean, yeah. I got it. Both my parents is Liberian. They both ended up settling in that area. So yeah. whole life has just been, you know what I mean, just been a mass boy and shit. So yeah. I try to bring a lot of that into the music along as being Liberian too. Because, yeah. you know, I grew up in a Liberian household. So yeah. I got to bring that stuff out too. Okay. So you've been, you been, you been born in, uh, in mass by the Liberian parents, right? You call El Abijonga and... You got both Liberian sound and you got like the American sound, cause we 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 heard we heard the uh, uh record and we heard the Liberian we heard we heard the American record. You got multiples of these that like, of those that coming right now. So we just want to know like the LRB from your name. How much did that LRB really means to you? I mean, shoot. I mean, even though you know niggas was born in this America and shit. I mean, we still got the whole African booty scratcher shit. Yeah. Coming, coming up in school and shit like that so you know and that shit was crazy too cause it was like American kids calling you African booty scratch and it's like <laughs> nigga you was born right here with them too and shit nigga <laughs> yep. but you know what I mean mm -hmm. whatever might have you might just have like just a different name than them you yeah. know what I mean your parents customs a little bit different mm -hmm. than theirs so you know I threw the L.I.B. in there because I had a different rap name beforehand, though. I'm going yeah. by something else. What name was you going by? Shoot, I'm going by First Drive. First Drive? Why First Drive? I mean, I had a freestyle way back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, like, LeBron or something was getting drafted or something in the league, and I just had, like, yeah. a freestyle in there. I was like, LeBron, first draft pick. Yeah. And then my cousin was like, no, nigga, you first draft. <laughs> and he was like... He was mm -hmm. like, because I always used to like to write since I was a yeah. kid. So he was like, yo, if you first draft, that's mm -hmm. like the original fucking copy. Yeah. You can always fucking fix it to get the final copy, but the first draft is always the original copy. Yeah. And if you're doing it from a sports type way, then it's like you the first round pick. You you the nigga that's supposed to save the franchise. So mm -hmm. you, the, you, the, you the nigga that, you know what I mean? Like LeBron gets drafted, I he changes the whole shit of the team. So... That's really where that came from. Okay. But I kind of gave my myself that name. So, mm -hmm. like, when it came down to it, to, yeah. I wanted to change my name. So I had to think of something that, like, niggas already called me. And niggas mm -hmm. been calling me Jungle even before I even yeah. gave my name first draft. But I didn't really want to call myself Jungle because I felt like it was just too... Mm -hmm. It's just too simple and shit. Yeah. So when it came down to change the name, I just changed it to Jungle. Mm -hmm. And it was like... The funny thing, how I threw the L.I.B. in it, I threw the L.I.B. in it on accident. Because there's another <laughs> nigga in my city who was yeah. like, yo, my name is Jungle 2. And like yeah. some shorty, she was just came up to me, one of my homegirls. She was like, yo, you know there's some other nigga calling himself Jungle 2, right? <laughs> yeah. So I just I started getting around like, yo, fuck that nigga. I'm the L.I.B. <laughs> Jungle. Yo, so yeah. I just threw that in there. My man was like, yo, you should just run with it. Yeah. So uh, speaking of the L.I.B. 2, 
But it's crazy that we're both cousins. Right? And, and we didn't know what cousins. And we didn't even know what cousins. Ago. We really didn't know what cousins. You used to send me a song back and forth. I'm like, yo, bro, your shit hot, but we really don't talk like that. Every time you come in, like, real, bro, you got to get your shit promoted. And then. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? shit that nigga told me one time. The first time I met. The first time I talked to this nigga on the phone, this nigga told me some shit. He was like, yeah. Yo, the shorty was running the the, the page. She's yeah. in Liberia. Hell yeah. Hey, yo, she got paid for like the data and, and shit. The data and shit like that. Yeah. Like, nigga, you in fucking Philly, nigga. So fuck. <laughs> but that's the shit about it. That's what a lot of people didn't know. At that time, I had a female back in Liberia running the shit. So how you your second one? Because when you that? this shit is crazy. Because this shit come a lot of work. Niggas sending you work to check. Niggas emailing you. Niggas texting you. Niggas DMing you. When they go, pressing the number. When they go on your, when they go on your phone, yeah. flip, like, share, boom. Call it like bring people out, bring it down. You take your phone off, you go on your, go on the website. That share the team is simple. Yeah. yeah, like you talking, like it's easy to say, like like just grab this shit, pull this shit together, share this shit. Nah, that shit don't work like that though, because you gotta go, you gotta, you got you gotta take a link and transfer the link to something else to like a repost app, and you gotta download it. Right? When you download it, you got option to take the caption that the nigga use first. But you got option to create your own caption before you go and post. So it's like whole different things. I it's like you, it's like whole lot of different things. My nigga, we're in 2022, my god. But we move. Yeah, 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 we yeah. move. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing about it, man. Shout out to you, man. You know what? You want to So so if you ain't know you my my cousin, you wouldn't be rocking me like this, right? I would still rock with you though. Cause I, I was see. rocking with you, but at the end of the day, business was already in between. And when we met, when we met, we met, we met at a weird place, cause we met at a funeral. That's true. And I didn't even know that we met at a funeral, and we kick it that whole night. We kick it, we kick it in mass for like a couple minutes, for a couple of hours, cause I had to drive back. When your niggas had me drunk, I couldn't drive back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You introduce us straight to that man. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't come back on the five hours. Five hours drive, but that shit was all fun. That's why you see, like, I see I fuck with you heavy, and I invited you to Philly. You pull, you pull up, and you fuck a bunch of niggas from Philly. I just want to know, like, uh, you in Mass, when we have a Massachusetts, or we have a more Caribbean style, right? We have a more, like, uh, American-wide things like that, like, retired. We just call it retirement still, just what we call Delaware. So that's the city. When you retire, you want to go back there and realize mm-hmm. Cause shit still going on, don't get me wrong. Shit going on, but shit is not really that crazy in certain areas. So we call that shit like a retirement vibe. But you being back there, messing with the Caribbean, messing with all these things, and you standing up and representing Liberia, right, to the fullest, because your name speaks for itself. How do you feel when you say when you when you stand up like yo, I'm no I'm I know I'm American, but I'm proud to be a Liberian. How do you feel when you do that shit? I feel like honestly, I feel like for from where I'm coming from, I feel like we always had to. That that's not a new. That's something we always had to fight. Just mm-hmm. in like the mainstream music in general, like Mass is not really a place where like a mm-hmm. lot of artists come out. Uh, like recently, now there's been a lot of artists are coming out of Mass doing their thing, but it's not really a place that's really been breaking out artists. And there's a lot of talent out there. So mm-hmm. like with Mass niggas, especially when we go out of state, like we almost carry like that chip on our shoulder and shit. Like. Mm-hmm. All that shit that people be saying on TV, like, yo, mass people, they call mass holes, like, yo, y'all niggas is too loud and shit, like, I think that's probably, probably because, like, we kind of carry that chip on our shoulder, because it's like, even when you look at the Liberian community, like, niggas will talk about Philly, niggas will talk about Minnesota, Iowa, and respectfully so, because, you know what I mean, that's where the energy's at, but, you know what I mean, if you really want to look back at your history and shit, mm-hmm. you'll know that mass, we contributed a lot of shit, too, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? For our music, even in like the community, like we out there, we heavy. It's just that the energy out there doesn't really push artists to really be artists. So that's why we out there kind of just fighting the good fight and shit, trying to like put our swag out there. So we get that shit on both sides too, both from the Liberian side and the American side. So yeah. even from as far as like the Liberian side is putting it out there because it's like, I got a lot of that shit from a lot of the Caribbean folks because they was going, they went through the same shit that we went through in Africa. They was calling yeah. them niggas yeah, yeah. all kind of shit. Yeah. And them niggas stood up and did what they had to do to represent their shit. Yeah. And me being African, I was always embraced by them niggas. Them niggas always wanted to know about Africa. 100%, man. 
Them niggas always wanted to, you know what I mean? Some of them niggas even want to come to Liberia real quick. Like, on some real shit, nigga. They want to drop the mod. They want to come to Liberia just off the shit they see me doing out there. So, yeah. you know what I mean? We all third world, my nigga. Hell yeah, shit. third world, man. Everybody from a third world country, doesn't matter if you was born in America. You still be from America, right? Mm -hmm. And still be a third world nigga. And that's why we came up with third world. Because it was like, even the American niggas can understand, like, nigga... Look at outside where we are right now. Look at, you know what I mean, the inner city. We literally living in a third world country in that asset. So yeah. it's like pretty much the same shit. All right. We gonna jump into music, right? Yeah, I talk to you. L.I.B. Jungle, the record Why You, right? Bid I call my King Juice. Hey. When you talking about Bid I call my King Juice, right? Why is the meaning or what's the, what's, the, what's the thing behind that bit of color much king juice for those who don't know what bit of color really is? A bit of color in the king juice. Because I look, when you say bit of color in my king juice, right? I'm a librarian nigga, so I'm thinking like it's a mixture or something. Because bit of color, we got cola nuts and we got king juice. So when you say bit of color in my king juice, what that really means? Ah, uh, man. Well, let me break it down for y'all American folks out there. Yeah. Y'all better call her. Anyone put you on better call? I'm gonna tell you like this. If you having any trouble with your marriage right now, yeah. just take some better call her and thank me later. If you having yeah. Valentine's Day is coming up though, man. Yeah. So you and your shorty going through some rocky times, just take one better call her. That That's shit's a gonna fact, be better man. as fuck, nigga, but yeah. Thank me later. I approve that message too, man. And King Juice, <laughs> and King Juice yeah. that's just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's just a traditional African, you know what I mean, beverage and shit. Yeah. So, you know what I mean, you mix the two together, you don't know what the fuck finna happen. Yeah. You haven't, you have you wasn't born in Liberia, as you said, right? But uh, you're one of them niggas that really go back to Liberia every year. And you even did a music video back in Liberia. Mm -hmm. Why was that music, that song specifically, why was that song so important to people that you had to go back home, back to your root, where your fathers, where your mother, where your great, great, your great grandfathers and your great grandparents are from, to go back there and shoot that music video just back in the same land where you know that your mom flew from that land due to like uh, war and other things, but you still went back to the shoot. Why was that important to you? I mean, I don't really think about it that deep. I just kind of look at it like, Cause you know, niggas was born out here, so mm -hmm. niggas never really got to meet a lot of our family. I never got to meet a lot of my family members, obviously, because, you know, half of them was over there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like me shooting the music video out there, part of it was just trying to, just trying to like, you know, sometimes you just try to like share some shit with your family that you already doing shit. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? They thought it was cool, obviously, and shit. So, you know. I thought it was cool too, just to do something different. Know what I mean, like we do, like obviously, man, I'm from Mass and shit. So most of the videos is all the same. Yeah. Know what I mean, the uh, the scenery is all the same and shit. I just wanted to do something different, just to show that. Know what I mean? Mm. Know what I mean, our passports is different. Know what I mean? All right, man. So you being a you being a hip hop artist, right? Mm -hmm. Trying the Afro beat sound on the record. Why you with DJ Billy, right? How was it like, right? What was what was the what was the uh, what was the process like for you, switching your hip hop style into Afrobeat, and creating something different? Why was that transition like for you? I just felt like it was just time, cause especially like I was like we were saying before, like Mass is a real hard state to really crack as far as like niggas to get niggas to fuck with your shit. Mm -hmm. So one of the main avenues is the clubs and shit. So yeah. I was like, yo, I had a lot of songs that was hitting, but shit can never really get to the club because, you know, you give the shit to DJ, DJs is always like, man, I can't really play this shit in the club. Like, blah, blah, blah. so I was like, all right, we're going to make some shit that, all right, if y'all niggas don't play this shit in the club, then nah, nah, this shit's on you. And I mean, Panda Replay, producer Panda, record, man. Panda, Shout out to Panda. Panda. You know what? We got Panda right here. Panda, you want to come in the camera? You already here, my nigga. Shout out to my shit. man, man. My man Panda is right here. Panda put me all the records and shit, man. Yeah. Panda came all the way up with me from Mass and shit. He's the yeah, one who produced the YU record and shit, so yeah, I yeah. holler at him and shit, man. You can just drop down, man. You can get it down a little bit. Just and we shot, shot, you know what I mean? Give me your contact info and shit, nigga. You can get it. This nigga doing all modeling and shit. Yeah, you can get down a little bit, man. 
That's Panda right there. That's Panda right there. So, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, I had the record for a minute, so it was like, like I said, yeah. I always came to him. He did all my beats, even like mm. the hip hop beats, the trap beats. Yeah. So I came to him. I was like, yo, I think it's time that, you know what I mean? He really came when I was like 14 years old. Oh, you were 14 years old? Mm -hmm. I was 14. I'm 24 now, but. God damn. The dude, the dude came when I was 14. It was with my older brother at the time, and then he seen me making beats and the. And the cut, and he was like, Yo, you know what? Let me pull up a chair and see what this dude got going on. Yeah, and damn, then, you know, niggas been locked in for long. Yeah, super damn. long. Damn, man. I used to be telling niggas, we used to be at the trap. my first client. We used to be at the, <laughs> we used to be at the trap. We used, I used to be at the trap. I used, uh, most of my niggas do music, too. Yeah. Niggas was right across the street. I used to tell niggas, like, yo, I'm going to go listen to some beats. Yeah. Nobody would nobody would want to come. I'd be the only nigga trying to come like that. So, man. I, I didn't care no one wanted to come, but I knew what I was doing. I mean, Charlie, shoot, man, most, all the beats is for me, so I ain't doing shit. Shout out to Panda. But shout out to Panda, so... He likes the beat. We made this shit happen. Yeah. Shout out to DJ Billy too, though. Shout out to DJ Billy. Billy the one who came up with the chorus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I gave him the beat. I was like, nigga, come up with whatever choruses you can come up with with this shit. Mm -hmm. Whichever one hits, we're going to work with that. Yeah, man. So he did like three choruses. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I was like, eh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The last one he did was the Jackin one. So mm -hmm. when he did that, I was like, after, even... At that, I was like, because I was about to ask you the je the Jacket record, right? What was the, what was the creative process like? Because I want to know. It was pretty much yeah. just like that okay. beat. That beat opened up the door. Now yeah. the beat definitely opened up the door. Yeah. Like the beat was definitely vibing. It was just kind of like, all right, Bill, wherever I I kind of told Bill like, all right, wherever you kind of go with this record, if it's slamming, I'm gonna just follow along with it. Yeah. So we went to went to my OG Tone crib. Shout out to Tone. Went went over there. You know what I mean. Yeah. Took our eight o'clock meds, took our took our king juice and bitter cola, mm. and nah, we made it happen. And when he did the chorus, I was like, "Yo!" Yeah. Especially when Tone put that shit together, I was like, "Yo!" <laughs> I don't even know though. Yeah. And we laced it. Everybody started rocking with it. Like, you know, girls are sending me, you know, selfies of them like yeah. singing the record and what shit. What you jacking for? <laughs> and I'm not even paying. I'm not even paying them to do it and shit. Like yeah. people just doing it out of love and shit. And mm -hmm. you know I mean, I appreciate that shit. All right, man. We've been kicking it a little bit. We've been talking a lot of different things. I just want to know just about actually you know, question based on you being a Liberian nigga, and you being an American nigga, and a Liberian hustle, but we still call you Liberian because you're first generation. Yeah, I just yeah. want to know, right? Let's cut the bullshit out. We know you've been trying a couple different foods: Caribbean food, African food, American food. Right. Chinese or from Chinese right? food. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the North, the, the yeah. Northeast got the best Chinese food. Don't let these you niggas bullshit you. We ain't gonna say nothing but Chinese food, but I wanna know when it comes to Liberian dish, right? Mm. What's what's that one dish that is always your go to meal? Like you, you got you gotta get that shit. Doesn't matter where you at. If you if you was to touch it, right? And that shit is a favorite. What's your go to favorite meal? Yo, so I ain't even gonna lie to you. When I was in Liberia. Like, there was this one, like, two, three day period of time, though. Like, I don't know if I ate something crazy, though. I wasn't feeling eating nothing at all. Mm. One of my aunts, but then on the third day, one of my aunts called me. She was like, yo, I get, I got some fufu and soup and palm butter. Ooh. <laughs> yo, I think my appetite came back like a month. <laughs> now, mind you, I was, only, I was only eating, I was only eating like bits and bits and pieces of food like for a whole three days. Yeah. I went to the spot. Yo, palm butter and fufu. Yo, my guy, I beasted that motherfucker. With the club beer, my nigga. Jeez. That shit sound, that shit sound high, though. But that's what, but that's really, that's really my go-to, though. I like a lot of things, but like, you, you you can't go wrong with that. Why? What's what? Yeah, I know like the palm butter and shit like that. We call that because every tribe in Liberia got different soup, right? For Basa, that's our food for soup, man. You can't go wrong with that. Of course, and then and then Dumbo too. I ain't Grand Basa. Why you never Dumbo about that? What do you mean? I swallowed. Oh, you know what? I ain't be I ain't be Kenya. They 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 beat the Dumbo in front of me. You know what? I'm gonna call you more Liberian than me because I've never been to be Kenya by Basa man. But I from I been I been I been to my I been to my original home. Don't get that fucked up though. I said, the, I said all the Boston women that they were singing from there dancing for me. Yeah. Bobo na bobo, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, we're gonna get back in the interview, man. Yeah, we're gonna get back, man. Like, uh, I just wanna know right now, right? What are you working on right now? What we, what we should expect from, from, uh, from LIB Jungle, the artist? 
Uh, I'm working on my my first project actually is called Jungle Boulevard. Jungle um, Boulevard. I've been trying to put it out for like a couple of years right now, but I just felt like a lot of the sounds weren't really hitting the way they were supposed to be hitting. It's like yeah. some some days you feel like doing like this thing, and then some shit just comes up and you like do something totally different. So at least now I feel like I got a whole. I'm, I'm gonna use some real American words and cohesive. I don't even know what that means. Okay, that means everything. <laughs> yeah, that means everything kind of. Everything yeah. compressing. Everything compressing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, what I mean, we got a good amount of songs. Somewhere between maybe nine to fourteen joints. Working, working on some videos. Different, different types of vibes too. You know, what I mean, we got you know, what I mean, trap on there. Obviously, a little bit of trap code, a little bit of Afro beats, a little bit of like the traditional like hip hop type shit. So we just trying to just keep everyone like on their feet and shit. You know what All right, mean? man. We appreciate your time coming here, man. Uh, we just want to know like where people can meet you on every digital platform, a social platform. You can let people know. You can let your fans know for those who I'm still on, want to subscribe. I'm on LRB. Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's at LRB Jungle. Um, you can find me on YouTube. LRB Jungle. Um, the YU record featuring DJ Billy is out on YouTube right now. Mm -hmm. um, LRB Jungle on all musical platforms. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, find me, find me, find me in mass though. Shout out to all my Basso people. Shout out to all my black people. Basso, Basso, no. Nah, I, I, I had to throw. Basso, no. I had to, I had to throw, I had to throw the Basso side inside, man. Yeah, you you got me on half and half, man. You know what? Vasty Bas are small brothers, so we're still gonna keep it like that. No disrespect to Bas. You better, you better chill the fuck out. Yeah. Ain't said five people can sew, but they can't dress. We can't say that one all year, but man, we let it say. Yeah. But yeah, man, thanks for coming to the interview, man. I really appreciate your time. You coming from Miles to fuck with me. Nah, and nah, shout out to Pong Side, too. Nah, man, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate you, Cuzzo. I mean, this platform, I mean, definitely needed right now, though. Yeah, man. I mean, and just keep going, though, man. Whether we family or not, though, my nigga, yeah. I got you, though. I mean, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate, it. I appreciate I mean, that, it, man. I mean, that, that's the teardrop moment, man. We better get an Oscar for so this what, shit. So, so what was the, what was, the, what was the reason we're going to do the first interview? Can you let people know? Just to fuck your head up a little bit. Nah, you see what happened was, man. Shit. See that was Independence Weekend, my nigga. Shit. <laughs> yeah. like, I had too much. I had too much that I call in my king juice. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate the time, everything, and that's it, man. Uh, it's a wrap right now. I really think we can. We can. We're gonna link right. again, man. You already know. Feel the man. Feel the top. So you already know that shit. I'm gonna be in my soon. I'm probably in Rhode Island, but I will come to my so. I'm his personal. You my lawyer. Tell him for him, though. No. Let him for him. Let me a lawyer. Tell him my lawyer. I'm a lawyer. Any chunk of that won't be cussing me on Instagram. I ain't gonna go. I'm not lying. Yeah, this is a wrap, man. You must jam, you must jam. When I beat it, you must say I up high. Bye.